In the headlines, the Minister for Public Works addresses concerns over implementation of the Procurement Act. Health authorities warn of serious complications for pregnant women should the Zika virus make it into Dominica. And government to restore main road at Victoria Dallas destroyed by Tropical Storm Erica. I am Andrea Lee with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. Despite concerns by the Dominica Builders and Contractors Association regarding the Public Procurement Act, the Public Works Minister says the act has been implemented properly. The Procurement Act took effect in January 2015. However, the Builders and Contractors Association has complained that the requirements under the Act for Public Procurement Practices are not being followed. The Public Procurement Act guides government procurement practices. It deprives the private sector of a fair opportunity to bid and get engaged into providing services for the government, goods and services. It further causes a disadvantage of our citizens in that it's Dominica is fertile ground for practice in order to go out to the OECS or around the world in delivering services and supplying goods. If we do not have the opportunity to practice tendering, practice um, bidding, um, we won't be able to do it on the outside. Libler says he thinks local contractors were also shortchanged in providing their services after Tropical Storm Erica. Did you hear any of the services being advertised from the government side for private sector engineers or architects or anybody else or equipment owners to provide services to the government? Did you, did you hear of... Um, like the Daly's Bridge, for example, was it advertised for design and build? Um, all of the other reconstruction work is the opportunity for, for, for locals, small and big. Public Works Minister Ian Pienaard, on the other hand, told Channel 5 News the Builders Association has nothing to worry about because government is keeping to public procurement practices. It has been implemented last year in 2015. Um, during Tropical Storm Erica, we didn't use the, the, the public uh, procurement because it was an emergency uh, measure. But as, and that's the, only, that's the only time we, we, we didn't use it, but the, it's, in, it's in force and it's been utilized now by the government. Chief Medical Officer with the Ministry of Health is warning of complications associated with the Zika virus. Lurian Graham Carter reports. Dominica is currently on full alert for the Zika virus, which could enter the island undetected. Zika has been identified in several countries in Central and South America, including Venezuela, Mexico, and Panama. More recently in Suriname, Puerto Rico, and Martinique. Symptoms of Zika virus may present the same way as chikungunya and dengue, or there may be no symptoms. Dr. Johnson says while most of the cases of Zika resolve themselves in two to seven days, the virus can be life-threatening. Some patients might go on to develop problems of the nervous system, a uh, particular problem which is refer referred to as the Guillain-Barre syndrome. These patients present with worsening weakness in, in the body and may require hospitalization. If the muscles of the respiratory systems of those patients are affected, these patients may require um, intensive care treatment. And depending on the aggressiveness of the, uh, of the illness in terms of this Guillain-Barre um, illness, some of these patients can even die. Dr. Johnson says Zika can also have serious implications for pregnant women who have the virus. There's another major complication which occurs, which at least was identified in um, Brazil, in Brazil in particular, in babies, that some babies are born with poor development of their head. Um, the head are normally smaller than others. It is referred to as microcephaly. The Ministry of Health is increasing its education and awareness efforts to reduce the population of the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which causes the virus. They are encouraging communities to protect themselves against being bitten by the mosquito.
Public works engineers are conducting assessments in Boitica and Dalis to inform governments of the best possible approach to enhance access to those communities. Government is now turning its attention to the main road at Victoria Dalis, which collapsed following Tropical Storm Erica. Vehicles cannot access that route since part of the road sunk 40 feet. Since then, a bypass at the back of the Dalis Catholic Church is being used to access the rest of the community. According to Public Works Minister Ian Pinard, the Dalis community can rest assured that the Victoria Road will now be addressed. We're also now looking at the Victoria area in terms of waiting for assessment from the Ministry of Public Works because the bridge there, in terms of the culvert that was there, is, is, is washed away, so there's a, a deep wash. So we're looking at and waiting for the option from the Ministry as to what we put there. You know, we put a, 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 another Bailey Bridge or we, we, we build a box culvert. So we're waiting for proposals from the Ministry so we can, we can, we can go to Victoria so that road will be reinstated and, and fixed. So we're, we're looking at the, the, the Whittacan Dillis area in terms of all the, the landslides, all the, the, the road failures that was done because we couldn't go through with heavy equipment because of the, the gorge. But now that we can go through, we're doing all the necessary assessment so we can get it done as quickly as possible. The plan for Boitica is to strengthen the security of a Bailey Bridge over the gorge, which was installed on Christmas Eve. We're doing the approaches, so the approaches to the Bailey Bridge will be concreted and safety measures like the, the rails will be put in and we expect by the end of January that, that project will be completed. So when you're going to Boitica, the, the roads, the approach, the approaches to the, to the Bailey Bridge will be concreted and all that will be finalized. So it'll be a lot safer mm -hmm. driving to Boitica and Delis. Calypso fans expecting a change in the format of Calypso eliminations are being advised that will not happen anytime soon. Some people think there are too many Calypsonians competing at the eliminations, which makes the show run for too long. But former president of the Calypso Association and its current treasurer says different ideas have been discussed to address the situation, and the current format makes more sense to the executive. We look at a lot of things, but I think it will stay like that for a while. Yeah. Uh, some people talk about separating the two shows uh, and all those things, but you might put 30 here, 30 there out of 60, and say you're choosing 12 from each. And just 30 might have about 20 of the best Calypsonians, and you choose some there, and just because you say you're choosing 12 here, you might leave out some very good Calypsos because that 30 has, you, you know, so when you're out of it, you think you know everything, but we inside there, when we make decisions, it's after we, we talk a lot. Williams says in the past, Calypsonians entering the competition would have been eliminated at the band house, but according to him, those Calypsonians were most entertaining. He says the executive has also toyed with the idea of starting the show earlier. Even this year, people were talking about starting 7 o'clock. You as a performer, you don't want to sing in front of an empty, you know, no audience. Now, it was 8 o'clock, and when it was 8 o'clock, you still had an empty place because in Dominica, somehow we don't like to leave our home 7, 8 o'clock to go anywhere. People knowing that you have 79 Calypso and Angelvi Calypso till 2 o'clock, so they don't care. They come 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, people are still coming. You know, that's the way they go out. To go until the debut. Six young girls were officially launched to the public as the contestants for this year's Carnival Princess show. The show is coordinated annually by the Rotaract Club of Roseau, which continues to seek sponsorship for this show as one of its fundraisers to give back to community. Funds generated from the show help us focus on our motto, which says service above self. We give back to communities all over the island through community service projects and outreach programs. The potential sponsors who have not yet made a contribution to the Carnival Princess Show, we invite you to make your contribution to support to society and help support our cause. Like everybody else, we have been affected by tropical storm Erica, but we cannot remain stagnant. The country has to push itself in order to move itself. The six participants are Gabriel Williams, 10 years old, from the St. Luke's Primary School, sponsored by Carib Sand and Stone, 
Kylie Carlson, 8 years old, from the Caleb Lower Primary School, sponsored by Cora's Poultry Farm and Diamond Girls. Cadella Charles, 10 years old, from St. Martin Primary School. Danica Bernard of the Goodwill Primary School. Kiana Etienne from the Grand Bay Primary School, sponsored by Global Experts and Sheraton Restaurant and Bar. And Rain Benjamin, 10 years old, of the Convent Preparatory School, sponsored by Greens Wholesale. Lightning Julian of the St. Luke's Primary School won the Carnival Princess Show last year. When we return, more news, sports and weather. Welcome back. Minister for Health Dr. Kenneth Daru says drug abuse is still a cause for concern in the Ministry of Health. January is Drug Awareness Month. This year, Drug Awareness Month is being celebrated around the theme, Let's Develop Our Lives, Our Communities, Our Identities Without Drugs. Dr. Daru says even if the ministry is working to reduce drug abuse in Dominica, the numbers from a local survey for 2012 to 2013 were still high. Despite continued and increased efforts by the international community, the world drug problem continues to constitute a serious threat to public health the safety and well-being of humanity, in particular young people, and the national security, and that it undermines socio-economic and political stability and sustainable development. In 2012 and 2013, over 231 persons visited the emergency room at the Princess Margaret Hospital with drug-related illnesses. These range from alcohol-induced psychosis to marijuana intoxication. This shows that drug abuse, whether licit or illicit, have a tremendous impact on Dominica's healthcare service. Daru says several people feel vulnerable and become incapable of contributing meaningfully to society. By developing positive thinking, exercising, time management, setting goals, and cultivating a habit of kindness, one can develop his or her life. Positive thinking by itself may not lead to success, but it goes a long way to motivate one to do the other things that are required to develop yourself. Research has shown that positive thinking may provide increased lifespan, lower rates of depression and distress, greater resistance to the common cold, and better coping skills during hardships and time of stress. Dr. Daru encourages communities to show concern for the disadvantaged and get involved in activities which can positively affect their lives. The Office of Disaster Management and the Ministry of National Security are strengthening efforts in 2016 towards reducing Dominica's hazard vulnerability. The two institutions will endeavor to double up on the efforts at enforcing comprehensive disaster management strategies and processes. Climate change adaptation is also on the agenda for the overall development plan for Dominica. Comprehensive disaster management strategy is a strategy that has been developed um, by the Sidema States um, Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, which Dominica is part of, and it, it, it embraces 18 other states. And we came up with that strategy to drive disaster management in the region. It encompasses all stages of the disaster process, uh, planning, preparation, uh, mitigation, alert, response, rehabilitation, and sustainable development. The other component is that it involves all people. So it is not restricted, and it should not be restricted to the Office of Disaster Management. Several ministries will be on board during 2016 to help in implementing the Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy. This year, we, we, we want to focus and mainstream the CDM strategy and the Climate Change Adaptation Strategy um, into the main development ministries so that we can we can start building resilience um, from the policy level. We have developed, for example, the country risk profile that should speak to what are the risks involved when we're doing certain developments, not only from the public sector point of view, but also from the private sector point of view. Dominica is multi-hazard prone and is particularly vulnerable to hydromet hazards, the most frequent hazard on record. A hydrometeorological hazard is a process or phenomenon of atmospheric, hydrological, or oceanographic nature that may cause loss of life, injury, or other health impacts, property damage, loss of livelihoods and services, social and economic disruption, or environmental damage. 
Dominican youth are set to benefit from a 12-week-long CARICOM Education for Employment Youth Skills Training Project at the Dominica State College. The course, which will be held in January and June, targets people aged 15 to 29 who are technically inclined yet underprepared for work. This pilot project is a collaboration between the Department of Continuing Studies of the State College and the College of the Rockies in Canada, which facilitates this type of training on a global scale. It provides international opportunities for our staff and our students, learning experiences that they can bring back to the college and use to enrich their teaching and their studies. But in addition, I think that anyone who's actually participated in one of these projects knows that it's the relationships that you build with your overseas partners that really, um, really engage you and, and cause you to seek out additional international opportunities. We all look very forward to the implementation phase of the project and helping to improve the livelihoods of some of the young women and men in Dominica. The program will cater to 60 students. All the courses are at level one of the Caribbean Vocational Qualification, CVQ. DSC's goal is to guide each participant to achieve CVQ level one in at least one component. So the CVQ is designed to ensure that artisans like yourself and myself, TVET practitioners, have the requisite certification that they are capable and competent in the field that they present themselves to be in. So experts must be certified by the TVET Council. As a result of that certification, you will be welcomed in the family of Caribbean TVET practitioners. The four areas which fall under the Technical Vocational Education and Training TVET program being offered at the DSC are hospitality maintenance, bartending, landscaping and housekeeping. We are a national college and our business is to provide all citizens with the skills they require to come to college or to develop a skill that can enable them to make a living comfortably and raise a family. And that is what economic development is. I'm making those points so you understand some of the skills that we want to give you, that there are jobs if you get the skills. I believe that the only way for economic development and sustainability is through education. I don't care how you try to achieve it, if you do not educate yourself, you will not make it in life. The first of the two 12-week courses will start on 18th January. There will be nine facilitators for the project. That's news, sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. We bowl off with cricket. A good start for Volcanoes as they celebrated a win in their first game of the Najiko Super 50 on Thursday. Opening batsman Devon Smith scored 9-1 as Winwood Volcanoes edged Guyana Jaguars by one run courtesy of the Duckworth Lewis method. Smith and Ambrose came together to add 84 for the fourth wicket to steady the innings. Godakesh Muti took 3 for 32 and Stephen Jacobs 3 for 40 in favor of Guyana. Chasing a target of 175 for 33 overs after rain intervened, Jaguars found themselves short of their par score at 122 for 4 after 26 overs when rain ended play prematurely. Asad Fuladin was unbeaten on 44, Leon Johnson 25 and Vishal Singh made 21. Still in Super 50 cricket, home advantage favored Trinidad as they contended with Jamaica to a 84 runs victory. Trinidad batting first ended on 221 with Elvin Lewis top scoring with 74. Jamaica in reply scored 137 with no Jamaican batsman scoring more than Brandon King's 26. In more cricket action from Trinidad, Barbados tasted victory as they held their own against ICC Americans, winning by four wickets with 43 balls to spare. Alex Amsterdam led the way for ICC Americas scoring 73, his team all out for 183. Barbados next at the crease ended on 184 for 6, with Jonathan Carter undefeated for 55. And the match between the Hurricanes and combined campuses and colleges was abandoned due to rainfall. At one point, the Hurricanes were 187 for 5, with El Gigo Bonner top scoring with 65. The Nagical Super 50 continues Saturday in St. Kitts and Trinidad. In football, 
Another victory for Maho Soka Strikers as the team celebrated an unbeaten four-game winning streak in Division I football Thursday. The scores were 2-1 against Glenvillia Renegades. Jaren Sebastian and Kino Martin scored for the winning team. Then at Poirier Playing Field, Canefield Football Club and Element Agency's LA Stars played to a one-all draw. Rich Blair scored for Stars with Michael Abraham scoring for Canefield Football Club. Meantime, Premier League football returns with four matches carded for this weekend. Gerald George has details. Meantime, football action returns to the Windsor Park Stadium this weekend in the DFA Flow Premier League. On Saturday, Sideman Middleham United will take on Caribbean Cool Harlem United from 3 p.m. in the first match of a doubleheader to be followed by Buffet State Football Club versus Malta in the Icons Football Club at 5 p.m. In another doubleheader on Sunday, defending champions Kyrie FM Exodus Football Club will come up against Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers from 3 p.m., while at 5 p.m., league leaders Dubla Football Club will battle Sajiko Southeast. Moving on to track and field now, where plans are in place to form an association for coaches in Dominica. This move comes after an IAAF 10-day training session for coaches ended late December. 13 level 1 and 2 kids athletic coaches were certified. Here is Cedric Harris with the details. Coaches involved in, in athletics in Dominica certified and those who are interested in becoming athletic coaches or in some form or on means are involved in coaching and are not certified. You are invited to a meeting tomorrow, the 9th of January, at the Dominica Grammar School from 10 o'clock. The reason of that meeting is to formalize a structure for coaching in Dominica, for athletic coaching, to formalize you into a, a, an association, or if you want to call it a, a committee, coaching committee which will be recognized in our region, NACAC region. And finally, action in the National Rounders League returns with two quarter-final matches on Sunday. Dubic Strikers and Matadors will go head-to-head -head at Soufrier, while NCCU Domset Coast Stars will take on defending champions Stowe and Co-Harditors at Portersville. Both matches are expected to start at noon. Qualifiers for the semi-finals so far are Posse Rock Stars and Max Roy Conquerors. That's all the time we have for sports. I'm Kenny Williams. Join us again next time. For an idea of what we can expect this weekend, your weather report is next. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. Patches of low-level clouds continue to move across the islands of Valles Antilles today, with Dominica observing generally cloudy skies. Radar imagery indicated some shower activity across the island. For tonight, the weather is expected to be partly cloudy to cloudy with some scattered showers and similar conditions can be expected into tomorrow. Sea conditions moderate in open water with waves peaking near 7 feet. For the next three days, expect occasional cloudy skies and scattered showers on Saturday with a relative improvement in conditions expected by Sunday into Monday. For the remainder of the Caribbean, occasional cloudy skies and scattered showers can be expected. On the international cities forecast, overcast skies in New York, partly cloudy conditions in Miami, rain in London, and clear skies in Caracas and Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.34 a.m. and set at 5.51 p.m. For additional information, feel free to contact us at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and have a good weekend. To end the news, the headlines again. The Minister for Public Works addresses concerns over implementation of the Procurement Act. Health authorities warn of serious complications for pregnant women should the Zika virus make it into Dominica. And government to restore main road at Victoria Dallas destroyed by Tropical Storm Erica. Email us at news at marpin2k4.com you can access our past newscasts on our YouTube page. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend.